I am Wiebke, and I grew up in Düsseldorf, Germany with my brother and my sister, raised by my liberal, anti-authoritarian parents who are encouraging us to pursue our passions no matter where life would lead us. And so in my case, they were certain that would lead me to go to the art academy in Berlin like my grandfather. So like any self-respecting teenager, I decided to go into corporate finance, <laughs> banking, Deutsche Bank, and ultimately joining McKinsey, <laughs> joining the dark side of the moon. Now fast forward 20 years, and I'm clearly loving my business career. But I draw my inspirations from the brilliant designs of nature and the scientists and engineers who are studying her blueprints and sharing them in order to develop better products and systems. This field, Dana said so, is called biomimicry. And my passion is to bring biomimicry to business. I am inspired by Janine Benyus, the godmother of biomimicry, and her team of researchers who are telling all the blueprints of nature and sharing them on Biomimicry 3.8. I am inspired by Jay Harmon, who is developing actual products such as fans and propellers using the shapes of color lilies and whirlpools. I am inspired by the late Ray Anderson, who is the founder and CEO of Interface, the world's largest commercial carpet tile manufacturer and a $1.3 billion market cap company. They've been gaining market share and margins all the while, or perhaps because, of redesigning the entire business value chain, from sourcing raw materials to the manufacturing processes to distribution and even disposal of the post-consumer products. All of this to develop a nature-inspired closed-loop cycle with zero waste. And they're on track to achieve this in the year 2020. Biomimicry inspires me because I've realized that as a business person, the answers I've been looking for all of my business life have been there all along. I realized that if we develop businesses based on the principles of nature, we will develop businesses with sustainable growth, zero waste, and interconnected efficient networks of customers, partners, and suppliers. One of the insights of biomimicry is that nature produces zero waste. In fact, one organism's waste becomes the next organism's raw material. So Interface is applying this principle by placing their manufacturing plant right next to the local garbage dump and using the garbage dump's off gases to power their plant. That's beautiful. <clears throat> Perpetual, predictable growth numbers with maximum efficiency and zero negative impacts. So no looming lawsuits or regulators ready to clamp down, which industry analyst, board of directors, or investor wouldn't love that? Interface is doing this, a couple of other companies too, but the reality is most companies aren't. The reality is today we are at the end of the industrial age, an age where Henry Ford taught us to produce in straight lines where we push raw materials into our production processes and then literally heat and beat and treat them into submission. While this maximizes throughput, it also produces massive waste along the way. And we end up shoving massive amounts of products into more and more co competitive markets at lower and lower margins, forcing us to shove more products into the same margins just to eke out a little bit of growth. And we're just rarely accounting for the environmental cost that these businesses have on our world, and also, and just as importantly, the cost that these businesses have on their own workers. But it's okay. For That's where we came from. And we have to thank Mr. Ford, his assembly line, and the industrial age pioneers to raise our standard of living and for enabling us to develop the tools and technologies that we have today. For now is the time that we can use those technologies to study nature more carefully and apply her designs and insights to our businesses and our world. <clears throat> Let's look at an example. Slime mold. You know, that stuff that you can actually find in your backyard under piles of leaves. Give slime mold a petri dish full of oat flakes 
and it proceeds to canvas the entire Petri dish, branching out tons and tons of little branches. And then very quickly, it starts pulling back those branches that are dead ends or detours, leaving a translucent trail of slime as a marker for the organism not to waste energy growing that way. And then ultimately, it ends up interconnecting the nodes of oats it has discovered in order to create a very efficient interconnected network. So if I take one oat away, the rest of the organism still survives. Now, if we apply, if we arrange the oats in a configuration that copies the population density of the cities in the greater Tokyo area or the United Kingdom, it turns out that the slime mold network not only eerily resembles the actual networks of roads and railways and routes, but it turns out those networks are more optimized than what the engineers developed over decades. A more optimized network designed by slime mold in 26 hours. So, yeah, exactly. Yay, slime mold. <clears throat> now, short of you developing and needing a shortcut to, to develop the next light rail system, we can apply slime mold more broadly. Network engineers have modeled the branching behavior of slime mold into algorithms, and they're using these algorithms to build better networks that are more resilient and flexible. Should one server fall away, now the servers know how to reconnect with each other, not causing bottlenecks. Back at my home office, we were chartered to develop the next growth platforms for our business. And we could have built a bigger call center with more aggressive calling techniques. But luckily, our team realized, let's use our nodes of oats, our customers, our students, learners, employers, and educators, and build a platform where we can connect them so they can signal their needs to each other and collectively solve their problems and create a stronger education ecosystem. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. While there is a lot we can learn from iceberg, and that's a whole nother talk, <laughs> <laughs> there are billions and billions of organisms and ecosystems out there. And clearly, slime mold is amazing. But in the end, it's just a single cell organism. So just imagine what we can learn from more complex and evolved systems. Just remember what we learned from the burr that has to hitch rides on the fur of animals miles out in order to spread its seeds. It was the hook of the burr that inspired modern day Velcro. And my children to date don't know how to tie their shoes, which is another TED talk. <laughs> Just imagine what we can learn from corals. Corals build some of the world's largest structures, so enormous they're visible from outer space. And they do this without harming a single guppy and while absorbing CO2 as a raw material. Now, the concrete industry happens to produce concrete, the world's second largest commodity only after water. And it emits 5% of CO2 every year. What could the concrete industry learn from corals? Or what could we learn from honeybees? When honeybees are given options of where to place their next beehive, they select the optimal location 95% of the time. Any venture capitalist would die for that success rate, <laughs> <laughs> placing their next investment. Just ask the honeybee. So when I look at biomimicry and nature as a business person, I see a research and development lab for my innovation. In fact, I'd say, we are grossly negligent if we don't make our businesses tap the 3.8 billion years of R&D that nature offers us. And the key is to think about the entire business value chain. Let's not shortchange the potential of biomimicry by just designing a few shinier, better products. But we really have the potential to reorganize and restructure entire industry sectors. And we know if we build our business in the future based on the principles of nature, by definition, we will create healthy and harmonious businesses. For it is Mother Nature who is designing for mutual sustainability and life. It is she who ensures the thriving and survival of generations to come. To come. <laughs> it's like, yes, somebody agrees. <clears throat> so, now is the time 
for us. Um, now's the time for us to leave behind the straight lines of the industrial age and start embracing the curves and spirals of nature. Now's the time for us to stop maximizing for just a few and start optimizing for all. Now is the time for us to learn how to restructure our hierarchies and silos of specialization into interconnected, cross-pollinating networks of ideas. Let's leave behind the input-output processes full of waste and develop closed-loop business systems, communities, and economies with zero waste. So next time, you're looking for an answer be it for real, in your personal life or in business, or in real life and in your imagination. Ask yourself, what would nature do? Ask yourself, what would slime mold do? <laughs> and you will see, <laughs> and you will see you arrive at sustainable, symbiotic, and stunningly beautiful solutions. Thank you.